Good evening. We'd like to welcome you to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. This is our Wednesday evening Facebook service for the shut-in, those having to work, uh, hindered some other reason, maybe a caretaker, can't come, but we hope this will be a blessing to you this evening. And uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about our church. Our services on Sunday mornings start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11, Sunday nights at 6, Wednesday nights at 7, and the Trinity Baptist Church is located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. We also have a FM transmitter for those that would like to come, and maybe they're a little bit afraid to come in. Maybe they think they might have something somebody might could catch or not sure, and if they'd like to sit in the parking lot, they can tune their radio in the parking lot to 92.9 FM and be able to hear what's going on inside the services. And uh, we want them to get well. We're praying for them. Those that are sick, having to do that because of sickness, that they'll get better and uh, come on, be able to come on back in and be with us. But we're glad we have that for those that are not feeling well. Well, it's good to have you this evening. We hope this service will be a blessing to you. I want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Then we're going to sing a congregational song together and then maybe do one more number before we preach. But uh, pray for us and please pray with us if you would. Father, thank you so much this evening for the privilege to pray. I pray you'd help the songs to be a blessing, what's said to be a blessing. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for being so good to me and to all of us, Lord. I pray for the lost that they'll get saved. Those that's backslid, they'll get right with you, Father, before it's too late. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you'd just bless our missionaries this evening, Lord, meet the need in their life. Brother Brent Rochester and his wife, Sister Francie, and then Isaac and Angela and Chloe and Kidron and Micah, God bless them. And Lord, just thank you for being so good. I pray for, well, we got a lot of folk in the church that are not well. They're sick physically. And I pray for them, Lord, you'd meet the need. We've got some folks that are sick spiritually as well. We pray for them. God, I pray in Jesus' name, God, you'd help them. I pray, God, tonight that you'd just bless our country, those that are in authority over us, those that's lost, that they'll get saved. And just thank you for the privilege to have this service. Thank you for answering prayer. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to sing a song out of the old Red Back Church hymnal called I'll Meet You in the Morning. And uh, one of my favorites, this was one of my Grandma Nichols' favorite songs, and I love the message in it myself. And uh, listen, if you're saved by the grace of God, if you've been born again, I'll see you one day in heaven because God saved me. And uh, I love the thought of this song. It talks about by the smiles that we wear. You and I that are saved by the grace of God ought to be smiling people. I know, we're, I know we have troubles. I know we have problems. But we got a God that's way bigger than any problem we could ever have. And by the way, let me say this right here real quick, like right before we sing this song. I'm glad the God I serve, the God of the Bible, Amen. I'm glad the God I serve is way bigger than any virus or anything like that. Amen. My God's able. Let's do this old song together. Hoping to be a blessing to you this evening. I'll meet you in the morning. I will meet you in the morning by the bright riverside. When all sorrows have drifted away, I'll be standing at the porch with the of life's long dreary day I'll meet you in the morning with a how do you do and we'll sit down by the river and with a rapture old acquaintance we do you'll know me in the morning by the smile Oh, me in the morning. 
are the smiles that I wear when I meet you in the morning in that city that is built for square. I will meet you in the morning at the end of the way on the street of that city of gold where we all can And I love that old hymn. Hope that was a blessing to your heart. Be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and be turning to the book of Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. We'll be picking up about long about verse number 34 and uh, maybe a little before that. But anyway, that's kind of where we'll be at. We've been preaching through the book of Luke a little bit here on Wednesday evening, Facebook service time. And uh, want it to be a help to you, an encouragement to you. And I believe it will be with the help of the Lord. And be taking that Bible, like I said, good old authorized, King James Bible. That bothers some people, but that's all right. Luke chapter number one. Why you say that, preacher? Because if you read out of some other version, you're not going to be able to read along with what I'm reading. I believe this is the word of God for English-speaking people. And thank God for it. Thank God for it. It don't need to be changed. You and I need to be changed. The word of God don't need to be changed. The word of God's just fine. Amen. All right, we're going to do one more for you. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to do one more song, and then we'll look right into the Word of God this evening. Father, help us as we sing this song, and Lord, as we look at your Word here in just a little while, Lord, I need your help. I can't do nothing without you, and uh, Lord, just help us to be a blessing uh, with this song here this evening. We'll praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, I've never done this on the... Uh, this video on these Wednesday nights and I don't guess I've done this out anywhere. I did do it one other place. I'll take that back. But uh, we've not done it out anywhere but we're going to start doing it some. Hope it'll be a blessing to you. And uh, I'm not going to tell you the name of it. I think you'll be able to figure it out pretty quick. But I uh, hope it'll be a blessing to you tonight. It's a Holy Ghost building. It's a Holy Ghost building. 
song, an old bluegrass gospel song, but uh, I hope that's a help to you this evening. I think they'll get tar down. We're going to be in the book of Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. I hope you are to where you can look with us. If not, we're reading to you right out of this good old authorized King James Bible. Thank God for the word of God. Luke chapter one. We said we'd start around verse number 34, but we're going to back up and read a few verses before that this evening kind of get us caught up on where we're at. Where are we at? You say, where are you at, preacher? Right here, where are you at, amen? But we're in Luke chapter one, talking about, preaching about, started in verse 26, about when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and tells Mary that she's gonna be the mother of the Lord, that God has chosen her to be the mother of the Lord. The Bible says she was a virgin. In verse number 27, it mentions the word that she was a virgin twice. Think about that. And he greets her and tells her what's going to happen. She says, how, th how shall this be, verse 34, since I know not a man. I've never been with a man. She'd never been with a man sexually. She'd never been with a man. She was a virgin. She was a spouse to a man. She kept herself pure. Hope that don't bother nobody. She kept herself pure, amen. And she didn't see how that could happen. Well, let's read on and see what happens right here. The angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the high shall overshadow thee, and therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Boy, I like that. The Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. There it is, the sixth month with her. Who? Elizabeth. They have been called barren. The angel Gabriel tells Mary to help her to believe this, that her cousin Elizabeth which was on up in age, was six months pregnant, amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, they thought that was, they were too old. Her and Zacharias were too old to have kids. And then the Bible says this in verse number 37, the angel says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Isn't that a good verse? i tell you what. Luke chapter one, verse number 37 for with God, nothing shall be impossible. The angel assured Mary that he could do what he said he was going to do, that God could do what he said he's going to do. He gave her some assurance in the fact that her cousin was six months pregnant. She had been called barren, but God worked a miracle in her life, and God could work a miracle in Mary's life, thank God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38 says, And Mary said, listen to Mary's response to what the angel said unto her. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Why well, like it? Be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now listen, the angel Gabriel had a great message for Mary. And I believe according to what the word of God teaches us, that not only did the angel have a great message for Mary, Mary had a great message for the angel. You know what it was? Be it unto me according to thy word. What she was saying was, I believe. She was saying, I'm willing. She was saying, behold, the handmaid, she said, I'm here to wait on you, Lord. I'm I want you to know that I'm going to be a handmaiden for the Lord. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, she's saying, Lord, if that's what you want, then that's what I'm going to do. And it didn't matter what she would be talked about. 
It didn't matter what Joseph may think about it. God would take care of that. It wouldn't matter what her mom or dad thought about it. We don't read that in the Word of God. It wouldn't matter what her brothers or sisters, if she had any, had that. It would, said about it. it. It wouldn't matter what her friends or whatever, whoever said about it. She made up her mind that, thank God, she's going to do what God wanted her to do. And guess what? That's what you and I need to do. We're not going to do the job that Mary did. But I tell you what we can do, when God speaks to our heart about what he wants us to do, we can say, behold, the servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, Lord, I'm willing, I'm willing to do what you want me to do. I said last Sunday morning, Mary is never to be worshipped. I thank God for my Lord's mother, though. She's never to be worshipped. She never told anybody to worship her. Matter of fact, she talked about uh, she is going to give birth to her Lord, amen. She needed a Savior just like everybody does. But thank God for Mary being willing. What, what a great example. Listen, they're, they're all through the Word of God. What a great example Mary is to be willing to believe God to do the what seemed to be impossible. She is willing to do it. She is willing to do it. God deals with individuals about doing things every day. Born again believers. He deals with lost people about getting saved. He deals with saved people about being obedient to God. And I tell you what, that's exactly what you and I, myself included, need to do. And I pray we can be more like Mary that we read about here in the Word of God. I tell you what, I'd love to go further. I really would. We don't try to make this as, as long as we would a Wednesday night service at the church. By the way, Lord willing, we'll be having service tonight. At 7, there at the church, we have this at 6. People can view it any time they need to view it. I know that any day of the week, but we put it on our Trinity Baptist Church Facebook page. By the way, Trinity Baptist Church, comma, Westfield. That's how it's on there. But we put it on at 6 o'clock, but people can view it any time. But listen, I'll tell you something. We need to just be obedient to God. Do what God has to do. Every one of us. Lord, whatever you want, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm going to close with this thought. You know what America needs? You say, preacher, I, I think America needs this. I think the United States of America needs this or that or the other. You know what the, you know what the United States of America needs? The United States of America needs, first of all, for God's people to get right with him and to live for him. And yes, people need to be saved. People need to be born again. People need to believe the word of God. You and I that are saved, listen, lost people need to believe what the word of God says about how to be saved and get saved by the grace of God. And you and I that are saved, we need to believe what God's word says about what we ought to do, and we ought to do it. And by the way, we ought to go by it. We ought to go by it. That's one reason I'm, I always mention turning that good old authorized King James Bible. I don't know what you've got, what you're looking at, but you need to get the right one, amen. Find out what God says. Back up in verse number 27, it said to a virgin. Some of the other so-called versions of the Bible they say a, a young maiden, a young maiden. It don't say a virgin. It says a young maiden. Well, listen, there's a big difference in a virgin and a young maiden. A, a woman could be a young maiden and not be a virgin. See, they change things. They change it. They don't want people to realize that Christ was God in the flesh. Amen. Mary didn't just give birth to anybody. She gave birth to God's only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God she was willing to be the vessel that God would use for that. Now, I said I'm closing and I am. I hope this has been a help to you. Now, Lord willing, next week we'll pick up about verse number 39. I might say, let me say one more thing. Well, it's hard to quit when God's giving it to you. I just read to you verse 38. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. I believe according to what we read in the Bible that that's, that's when she conceived in her womb right then. She put her faith in God. She said, I'm willing to do it. And I believe that's when she conceived, right then and there. And praise God, the Bible says the angel departed from her. The angel departed from her. And when she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth in these next few verses, praise God, her cousin Elizabeth knows that she's with child because the Holy Ghost told her that Mary was with child. So, I believe she conceived right then and there when she said, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel, the Bible says, departed from her. Thank you so much for viewing on this Wednesday evening. 
6 o'clock Facebook service or whatever day of the week or whenever you're viewing. Thank you for viewing. Hope this has been a blessing to you. And Lord willing, next Wednesday night, like I said, we'll be picking up on about verse number 39. And until next week, we'd love to say we love you. The Lord, we're praying for you. God bless you is my prayer.